Welcome to the Astrology Show with your host, Kelly Fox. Each week, Kelly will give you access to the current transits that are a valuable tool which provide astrological information to help unlock the potential each of us has through our sun sign. Understanding the current planetary influences each week can help steer us in the right direction to make better informed choices. Sometimes events in your life may seem completely random, but there is a pattern to the order of these events. One set in motion in part by you and in part by the planets and stars in the sky and their influence on your life here on Earth. So if you're wondering what's going to happen in your week ahead, if you're going to get that promotion, move to a new city, or fall in love, tune in to The Astrology Show for guidance. It can help you anticipate problems before they occur, give you tools to cope with changes, and help you look forward to the wonderful days ahead. Kelly Fox is a professional astrologer and internet pioneer who launched Astrology.com, one of the first and most successful astrology websites. Today, her passion lies with her new site, TheAstrologer.com, where she brings a modern-day approach to an ancient wisdom. Please join Kelly each week to learn more about how the planets can align for you. Hi there, and welcome to The Astrology Show. I'm your host and astrologer, Kelly Fox. How is your week going so far? Of course, there's always something going on with the planets. And this week is no exception. No, it's not Mercury retrograde. And no, we're through the eclipse season of 2017. So this week, what we have is the autumn equinox. Uh, that is, if you're in the northern hemisphere. If you're in the southern hemisphere, you will be celebrating the spring equinox. And the equinox occurs, it's the midpoint between the two solstices. I want to say solsti, but of course that is not uh, the correct terminology. Uh, so we are halfway between summer and winter, regardless of which hemisphere you are in. I will cover more about that later in the show. Uh, but I can hardly believe that it's already autumn. It is mind-boggling. Um, I remember saying happy summer solstice and now suddenly it's the autumn equinox. And in astrology, uh, the uh, winter, summer solstice, the autumn and fall equinox are the cornerstone of astrology, uh, particularly of Western astrology, which is what I'm talking about each week, because Astrology, the astrology that I talk about here in the Western Hemisphere uh, is based off the seasons. And so even though we call it the stars and whatever, and I talk about fixed stars sometimes, uh, that is not how astrology is calculated. Uh, it is calculated uh, based from the seasons. So it's big news amongst astrologers every time there is a change of the season change of the season, a season change, um, or we have an equinox or a solstice. So that is very big news and time for celebration. Now, the autumn equinox in the northern hemisphere, uh, spring equinox in the southern hemisphere, coincides with the sun moving into Libra. So on Friday, uh, we have the equinox, the sun moves into Libra. Uh, also this week we have a new moon in Virgo on Tuesday, so tomorrow night there is a new moon in Virgo, or depending on where you are in the world, it could also be early Wednesday morning. Also on Tuesday we have love planet Venus moving into Virgo, uh, and then there are some other astrological aspects, but really they're the headlines of the week. And of course, because the sun is moving into Libra, this show is dedicated to all you Libras out there. Uh, so we have a show tonight dedicated to Libra and everything Libra. And I will be covering Libra compatibility, most importantly, because Libra is the sign of 
love. It's a sign of relationships. So starting on Friday when the sun moves into Libra, uh, where it will be until October 22nd, uh, relationships will be on our minds more so, if you can believe that. So starting off with Libra, Libra is the sign of the scales and Libra's keyword is balance. Now that doesn't mean that all Libras are balanced, uh, it means that they're seeking balance in their life. Now if you think of uh, a seesaw and you think that a seesaw, you get on one side, somebody gets on the other side, and then you're trying to get that balance. You know, remember when you're a kid and you're sort of sitting there and you're saying, let's see if we can balance the seesaw. And then it's like one side up, one side down. Um, typically, Libra, it's like one side up, one side down, and they are seeking balance. Um, and balance would be Libra's lifelong pursuit. Uh, and so Libra is typically happiest when everything around them is in equilibrium. So in other words, when everyone is just happy and getting along and uh, smooth sailing, not choppy waters, uh, that's when Libra is happiest. But of course, when I say that out loud, it's like, well, isn't that what everybody really wants? Smooth sailing and uh, balance and fairness and harmony and peace and all that sort of good stuff. Um, so Libra is also the sign of legal affairs. Uh, so that's interesting because if you think about uh, legalities or, or the symbol for legal, it's the scales of justice. And funnily enough, that is Libra's symbol, the scales of justice. Very interesting because Libra sees all sides of something. Libra is the diplomat of the zodiac. Libra is the mediator. Libra uh, is the sign that can see all sides of things. And if you have a Libra in your life, you might find that they uh, take their time to make up their minds. Um, they're quite indecisive. And the reason for that is because they can see all sides to an argument. It's like they can see every perspective, every angle. Um, that's why Libras make great lawyers, uh, really good judges, because they can see all sides. And they do take their time to make up their minds. Uh, Libra is a cardinal air sign that's ruled by Venus, the love planet. Uh, and so the other sign that, Le that Venus rules is Taurus. So Taurus and Libra are ruled by love planet Venus and uh, they play out the energies of Venus in different ways, several of the different ways. So Libra is all about uh, living the sweet life uh, and when I think of Libra I think of socialising and, and good social graces and good manners and art galleries and uh, social lights of society, all have good taste, designer, designer wear, designer labels. Um, Libra is a very social sign um, because it's a sign of relationships. So it's all about not just romantic relationships but connecting with other people. Uh, think of um, parties and romance uh, being um, two of the sign's favourite pastimes. Um, also, with Libra, they can't stand confrontation, uh, and you know they they seek out happy, beautiful people. Of course, every every month when I dedicate the show to a sign, I'm just talking about generally the characteristics. That doesn't mean that every person born under this sign uh, seeks out happy, beautiful people. It's just a characteristic of the sign. Now, if you have your chart wheel in front of you. Uh, have a look and see if you have anything in Libra uh, that uh, might. It's not. This is not just about sun signs. This is about any sort of any planet um, in Libra that you might have. Uh, so have a look at your chart wheel. If you don't have your chart wheel, be sure to go to my website, theastrologer.com slash chart wheel to get your free chart wheel. And then each week when I talk about the planets and what they're doing. Uh, you can follow along and see 
if you have any of the planetary energies uh, that I refer to each week. So back to Libra. Um, Libra can be indecisive, as I said, and can have a reputation of, of being wishy-washy. Um, you know, and some people, or some signs might consider that like waffling around, um, not giving a, a really solid response to a question, but that's because they can see all sides to something. It's not because they're wishy-washy, it's not because they don't know, it's because sometimes it takes them a little while to make up their mind, because typically Libra wants to give a really fair and just response, an answer. You know, like Libra as an air sign is an intellectual sign. So you've got that on top of on top of the whole seeking balance and seeing all sides to an equation. So it's like, you know, if you do have a Libra in your life, cut them a little slack and they take their time to make up their mind or even to give you an answer. Uh, particularly if you're a fire sign uh, and that's Aries, Leo and Sagittarius and you're dealing with a Libra. Uh, fire signs are usually in a hurry, so um, Libra, as I said, likes to take its time to give the right answer. So, um, you know, so that's why this sign is known to be indecisive, uh, but really it's their desire to, to please, um, rather than getting in the way of having, having to make a firm decision. They're more about not rocking the boat, uh, as I said before. They really like harmony. And sometimes it'll be to their own detriment um, that they don't want to really, um, not confrontation, but really give a straight up response because it, they might be afraid of hurting somebody's feelings. So they can, Libras can be prone to telling little white fibs uh, in the name of bearing someone's feelings. On that note, we're going to take a short break, so stay tuned. Conscious Media for Conscious Minds. Times. The number one reason girls drop out of school in sub-Saharan Africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products. The Pads for School Girls Project, an outreach of Humanity Healing International, is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools, teaching girls a vocational skill, while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes. The girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit humanityhealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Aloha, my name is Jennifer O'Neill, and I'd like to invite you to come join me every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Hawaii Standard Time for my show, Spirit Chat. Spirit Chat focuses on simplifying the process of using the spiritual tools and gifts you were born with in a way that fits into your everyday life. I also teach different techniques that will help you learn how to navigate the spirit realm and empower you on your own spiritual journey. So join me this Wednesday as I guide you through the spirit world. Hi, this is John Andrasik of Five for Fighting, here for RAD, the entertainment industry's voice for road safety. You know, style is a personal thing, and your lifestyle is your business. But if you take it on the road, it becomes everybody's business. So please, plan ahead, designate before you celebrate. Friends, don't let friends drive drunk. A public service announcement brought to you by RAD, the National Association of Broadcasters and the Ad Council. Hi there, welcome back to The Astrology Show. I'm your host and astrologer, Kelly Fox talking about the planets this week. Uh, we are going to be celebrating the autumn equinox on Friday if we're in the Northern Hemisphere. If you're in the Southern Hemisphere, it is the spring equinox. And that coincides with the sun moving into Libra. So tonight's show is dedicated to all you Librans out there. Also this week, we have a new moon in Virgo. So it's all about new beginnings particularly around any sort of health kick, any sort of diet or exercise, 
Uh, if you're looking to start a diet or exercise program, now is the time to do it. Also, Love Planet Venus moves into Virgo on Tuesday night. So back to Libra. Uh, Libra, the sweet, affectionate, romantic sign of Libra. Libra is the sign of marriage and partnership. Uh, and Libra is ruled by Venus. Uh, Venus also rules Taurus. Uh, and so Venus is all about pleasure and bringing people together and uniting them in harmony. So this is this is right up Libra's alley, so to speak. Uh, Libra is all about, um, as I said before the break, I, when I think of Libra, I think of refined manners and good taste and excellent social graces and um, the socialites of society and being really well connected uh, for the men. Oh, what's that term? What's that term for the man? Uh, metrosexual, um, you know, the guy that gets manicures and he's very well groomed and uh, has designer clothes. And that, That's how I think of Libra. Um, very good taste and, and knows what's what and very much a trendsetter. Um, Libra is a cardinal sign and the cardinal signs of uh, Aries, Cancer, Libra and Capricorn are typically the trendsetters of the zodiac in different areas. Um, for Libra, it would be style and fashion and all that sort of thing. Um, Libra is definitely a diehard romantic. Uh, that's what they're known for, especially with Venus, their ruling planet uh, shining down. Um, and what's the other thing about Libra? Oh, it slipped my mind. But anyway, Venus is the ruler of uh, Libra, and you know Venus is known as the goddess of love. Uh, Libra and Venus are all about socialising and um, enjoying life. You know, enjoying life to the fullest. As long as you stick within your budget, there's definitely nothing wrong with that. Um, I said that Libra is an air sign. Um, so if you think of uh, the other air signs are Gemini and Aquarius, and if you think of phrases like the winds of change, um, that can tell you a lot about this element. Um, the, the air signs are the intellectual signs of the zodiac. And, um, you know, they're lots of fun to be around. They're quick to change their mind. Okay, not so much Aquarius, maybe Gemini and Libra. Quick to change their mind, they can be indecisive, um, but they're very clever and clever and know a lot about a lot in different ways, of course. And for Libra, Libra is quite a resourceful sign. Libra, Libra know, just knows stuff. So if you know of a Libra, you know what I'm talking about. They just sort of know stuff or they know who to. They're very well connected. Um, and they're like the social butterflies of the zodiac. Now, as I said, Libra is a cardinal sign, and so they're very much um, trendsetters, they're great leaders, but not in an obvious way. So if you think of the opposite sign of Libra, which is Aries, it's really obvious when you have Aries making the, the fearless leader. Uh, Libra is more refined. Libra is more um, diplomatic and refined. They make great leaders, but they do it in a in a more gentle approach, um, or a more coming from a more intellectual point of view. Because as I said before, Libras uh, make great lawyers. It's all about the law um, and judges, but they'll, they'll do it in, from an intellectual point of view rather than a physical um, or aggressive. Um, direction or a way, way to approach something. So um, the thing that I promise and I do every show is compatibility. So I'm going to move on now to Libra compatibility with the 12 signs of the Zodiac. So when you have Libra and Aries, you have uh, opposites attracting. And uh, if, if I think about Libra and Aries together, as I just said, they, they're both cardinal signs. They make, they make great leaders, but in very different ways. Aries is very obvious. 
uh, whereas Libra is more refined and not so in your face type of thing. So Libra has good taste, refinement, impeccable manners, um, all of which impulse to headstrong Aries. Um, could do a little bit of dosing of. I'm trying to think of a really nice way to say it. Maybe, maybe Aries lacks the refinements and good taste typically. Uh, but Libra is attracted to the excitement that Aries brings to the relationship. Um, and of course, the cardinal signs you are spontaneous and will try anything once. So, um, and typically with astrology, opposite signs attract regardless of what sign they are, as long as they're opposite in the zodiac. There is always a strong um, attraction and connection. Uh, so, I always say with opposite signs, when it's good, it's great. When it's bad, it's not. So, uh, in this case, um, this applies as well. So Libra and Taurus compatibility. Uh, you're both ruled by Venus, planet of love, beauty, harmony, and you will feel drawn to each other because of the connection uh, that you have through Venus. Uh, you both appreciate the finer things in life. Um, you love to indulge yourselves in each other. And, you know, you both can be quite extravagant, uh, particularly in your affections. And elegance and beauty mean a great deal to both of you, and that will definitely be defining the bond you have. Uh, but on the flip side, be careful, Taurus and Libra, because you could border on laziness and excess. And, of course, that's the shadow side of Venus, your ruling planet. Uh, next up, we have Libra and Gemini compatibility. Uh, well, the uh, key to compatibility is the element connection. So you're both air signs, so that's a great foundation um, for compatibility. So you do make a good match because you're air signs, um, so there's a lot of understanding between you. Um, you're both intellectually minded, so the conversation typically should flow. Usually you're never lost for words. So Libra, again, they're all about refinement and beauty and can bring these qualities to Gemini's life. Um, otherwise, Gemini might just forget the finer things because Gemini is just so busy doing so many things. Um, and together, though, uh, you probably have a lot of friends and good times and socialising. Um, but, you know, what Gemini lacks in the romance department, Libra will make up for that. Libra and Cancer. So you two are very different. Um, Libra is an air sign, Cancer is a water sign. But you're both cardinal signs. So you both make uh, good leaders but in different areas of life. Um, so you're very different in nature and values. Um, there is one thing, though, that does bring you together. Um, you both, on the flip side, can be sort of needy. Um, that's not really a good foundation for a relationship. Um, you know, and Chaos is looking for genuine emotional security, uh, while Libra is looking for companionship. Um, you might think you're looking for the same thing and have found it in each other, but when, when the relationship progresses, um, you might realise that you two uh, have very different natures. Libra and Leo, uh, you two make a great connection. Uh, so Libra the air sign, Leo the fire sign, and typically air and fire go really well together when it comes to compatibility. Um, your relationship is probably enhanced by lots of social activity, and of course only the finest things in life. That's definitely a big draw for both of you. Um, Libra, you'll probably appreciate Leo's big spending ways. Leo's very romantic. Libra likes romance. Uh, and Leo just might make Libra feel like royalty. Uh, but of course, there's everything give and take. Uh, so Libra, you need to make sure that you're returning the favour. Um, if you want to keep your lion feeling loved, uh, Leo can be a bit brash at times uh, for Libra's refined taste, but the lion's pride will be dented if this fact is mentioned, FYI. So 
So it's a good thing that Libra is ever so tactful. <laughs> Next up, we have Libra and Virgo compatibility. So at first, you two seem like a great match. Um, and Libra might sweep Virgo off their feet. Uh, Virgo and Libra, they're quite refined. Um, and you're both sort of smooth. Uh, Libra is definitely more romantic than Virgo. Um, you both sort of know, like, the right thing to say and do in any sort of social situation. Um, but in reality, you're driven by very different aims. Libra can be extra, excuse me, extravagant, demonstrative, um, and that might even sort of annoy or offend Virgo. I know that sounds sort of strange, but Virgo is quite reserved um, and shy at times. And um, maybe Libra needs to tone it down a little with the PDA. And also, um, Libra uh, does appreciate the finer things in life and um, can be a bit of a spender, and that's something that uh, Virgo is not known for. Okay, Libra and Libra love compatibility. Well, that's what an interesting combo. I can just imagine the sort of life that two Librans um, would have together. I'm just thinking through. I can't recall off the top of my head. Um, doing any double Libra compatibility reading. So when I think of Libra and Libra together, um, my first thought is, oh, you make beautiful music together. Two Libras together, how amazing would that be? Um, and on that note, we're going to take a short break. After the break, I will continue with Libra compatibility, so stay tuned. Real Conscious Connection. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Join Vibe Nation Radio host, international psychic medium, Carrie Turcott, as she guides her listeners to rediscover themselves by accessing the keys of knowledge that already exist within. Each week's show is divinely orchestrated to intertwine with the universal energies, allowing the listeners to go deeper within. At the end of each show, Carrie will tap into the energies of the listeners and give a message from Spirit about the upcoming week. If you really want to get to know who you truly are, join Carrie each Monday at 3 p.m. on Vibe Nation Radio. This is a test to find out if you know it all when it comes to children. Name one of the leading killers of U.S. children age 1 to 13. What's the best way to protect children in a car crash? At what age and size should a child start using a booster seat? Don't assume you know it all when it comes to car seats for your child. Go to safercar.gov slash the right seat and know for sure. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Hi there and welcome back to the Astrology Show. I'm your host and astrologer Kelly Fox talking about Libra all things Libra, just before the break, I was just about to start on Libra and Libra compatibility and how wonderful that sounds. Um, your connection is probably all about beauty and luxury and good taste and elegance and refinement. Um, it's like you have twin artistic sensibilities. Um, you're both probably very uh, highly romantic uh, maybe um, idealize one another in the relationship. And, you know, the flip side of that is it's okay to run through the tulips every now and again, but it's hard to sustain um, the reality uh, of that. No, not the reality. It's hard to sustain the fantasy of that uh, when life is all about reality. 
I was just thinking where is Sutton? Sutton now is in Sagittarius. Okay, that's not so bad for Libra. Um, but, you know, beneath the surface, maybe there's less connecting you than you thought, uh, and you might have a bit of trouble staying grounded together. But uh, who am I to burst your bubble? Hey. Libra and Scorpio love compatibility. Uh, this is a really interesting combination. So at first glance, this might not seem like the best fit, but on looking closer, you two might share an understanding that could be a great foundation for a relationship. Um, you're both very emotional in very different ways, um, definitely Scorpio more than Libra. And uh, that actually might be the only source of trouble between you. Um, Scorpio can be a bit jealous, and Libra likes to um, flit away and flirt away socially. It doesn't mean anything, uh, it's just the way they are, but Scorpio does not like that. Libra and Sagittarius love compatibility. Uh, this is a great combo. Remember I said before, uh, air and fire go really well together. Uh, so you two can really keep up with each other. You have lots of friends. Uh, and probably between the two of you, you probably know pretty much everyone in town. And uh, you're just the hive of social activity between you. Um, but there is a difference. Sagittarius is freedom loving. Uh, and might find that Libra just to be a little bit wee clingy. Uh, but you're both so good humoured and carefree in some ways um, that really this is a great connection. Libra and Capricorn, uh, you two are really different, but you are both cardinal signs. Uh, the thing that you do have in common is you both have very expensive tastes. Um, but Libra tends to be more artistically minded than Capricorn. Uh, and Capricorn just likes to show off that they can afford expensive things. And um, Libra will, imp will appreciate Capricorn's ambition um, and caretaking and being a good provider. Um, yeah, I think, I think the whole um, expensive taste is really the, the biggest thing that I can think of between these two signs. Um, but overall, you know, finances aside, I think, um, you know, this, this is not a bad mutually beneficial bond, uh, both being cardinal signs as well. You've just got to appreciate each other's differences. Libra and Aquarius, uh, you two do have a lot in common because you're both air signs, so there's a strong intellectual connection. Uh, there's probably a great exchange of ideas. Um, Aquarius is, is aloof. Uh, and detached, while well, Libra wants to hold on and latch on, uh, and it's all about companionship. But Aquarius really does need their freedom, and they like to run off in in, uh, in pursuit of a new project or whatever else. But uh, your combined social circles will probably be huge, uh, and sounds like a lot of fun, really. And finally, Libra and Pisces compatibility. Uh, your relationship will probably endure because you do have several overarching qualities in common. And the first one I can think of is you're both highly romantic and idealistic. And you, you're very, uh, both of you are very much caring and agreeable and helpful. Uh, and you will take care of each other in your relationship. Uh, but the problem here on the flip side is you may stay together just in the, for the name of love, even if the relationship isn't really what either of you want. Um, you know, Libra, you probably prefer an intellectual equal and you might find Pisces a little bit too ethereal or maybe even undirected. And also with Libra and Pisces, you share a karmic connection. So it's like there's a familiarity and a commonality in the beginning, um, but there's a lot that you both need to work through. Anyway, so that's Libra. So happy birthday to all you Libras out there. And as I said, um, the sun moving into Libra coincides with the equinox. So it's the equinox in the northern hemisphere, oh, sorry, the autumn equinox in the northern hemisphere and the spring equinox in the southern hemisphere. So what that means is that that's the halfway point between summer and winter. And so on Friday, uh, the days and the nights will be of equal length. 
that means that the sun rises due east and sets due west, no matter where on the planet you are. So days and nights will be just about equal. So autumn marks the lengthening of nights and darkening skies. So you might have noticed already that um, the sun is setting earlier and earlier. And maybe wherever you are in the world, the trees, uh, the leaves are changing colour and falling to the ground. And I, as I said earlier in the show, I can hardly believe that we're already at autumn or spring, or let's just say the equinox. I can hardly believe it. It was like I was just, I've just been talking about uh, summer and now we're already changing seasons. That is just mind boggling. So the other influences for the week. Uh, tomorrow, Tuesday, we have Love Planet Venus moving into Virgo, where it will be until October 14th. And so while Venus is in Virgo, and depending on where it is in your chart, your natal chart, um, you might be reaching for the stars in love. That's probably the best way to put it. And so what does that mean? Well, you, if you think or you won't settle for someone who doesn't meet your standards, preferring solitude to imperfection. So the thing with Venus, love plus Venus in Virgo, the sign of seeking perfection, when you put those two together, that does make a very good combination. And I don't know if you remember, like a lot of times throughout these shows, they say the planets have their favourite signs and their least favourite signs. And I'm sorry to say that Venus does not feel comfortable when it's coupled up with Virgo. Now, Venus is the planet of love and connecting with other people, no matter what. And Virgo is a sign, it's very discriminating, it's very picky, uh, but really its goal is to seek perfection. So there's no such thing as a perfect relationship, and that's probably the crux of the influence Venus in Virgo. There's no such thing as a perfect relationship. So if you are single and you're looking, you might find yourself to be more critical of potential suitors or even if you're in a relationship with your partner. Uh, and, you know, you may think you're being helpful, um, but your words during this influence uh, could be received as harsh or judgmental. Uh, and then, you know, on the flip side, you might be more sensitive to other people's criticisms uh, because you might be feeling less confident than usual uh, around relationships. And that's not just love relationships, that's any type of relationship. So Venus and Virgo, uh, what, is, what, I was say, what it is good for, Venus and Virgo, the best use of this energy is, you know, if you're willing to work through your relationship issues uh, that come up during this time, uh, you can make lasting improvements because Virgo is the sign of being helpful, of you know efficiency and making things better. So it it is a good use of it. So if if you're in a relationship and you have a blow up, uh, it's good to talk it through. Uh, Virgo is ruled by Mercury. That's a planet of communication. So there's there's a hint of Mercury and communicating and getting things out and talking things through at this time uh, when Venus is in Virgo. Uh, so the other thing is, it's like when Venus is in Virgo, really the, the best the best use of this energy is to work on the relationship you have with yourself. So self-acceptance is a big lesson when Venus is in Virgo, uh, especially around how you feel about yourself, how you look. You know, and if there's something that, that you're not happy with and you can change, then then do it. Uh, as I said, uh, there's a new moon, which I'll, I'll cover in just a minute. There's a new moon happening tomorrow, and it's a fantastic time for diet and exercise, uh, daily routines, um, getting our health in check, getting our health, getting our health in order. It's a great time to go and get a health checkup, even if there's nothing you think there's nothing wrong with you. It's just a peace of mind. This is a really important time to take care of yourself um, and try and sort of curb uh, the need to pick apart 
your own appearance and be critical of your perceived faults and imperfections. Um, so just, just focus on self-care habits, diet, exercise. It's really an excellent time to do so, not only because Venus is moving into Virgo, but because we have a new moon as well, both happening on Tuesday. So on that note, the new moon in Virgo is going to be at 27 degrees. And it is occurring, just here in my calendar, 10.30 p.m. Tuesday evening Pacific time, which is 1.30 a.m. on Wednesday morning um, Eastern time. So the thing with this new moon is, and there's always something, it's never just a straight up flowing easy uh, type of energy. Uh, this new moon, and I'm looking at, oh geez, and it's, oh, it's not too bad. This new moon is uh, forming a square to Saturn in Sagittarius. Uh, so this is tough on the mutable signs, and the mutable signs are Gemini, Virgo, Sagittarius, and Pisces. If you're born towards the later part of the sign, the mutable sign, uh, this new moon could be tough. It's, it's like you know that you need to make changes in your life, particularly around diet and exercise, but it might be hard to do so. So you're just going about your merry way, but because there's this square from Saturn, uh, the voice of authority will be speaking. And it's like if you're not willing to make the changes, the changes will be made for you. So just keep that in mind. Um, now through the end of the year, because uh, Saturn will be um, aspecting your sun uh, through December. So it's like if you're not willing to make changes yourself, these changes will be forced upon you. Uh, so we've got this new moon happening in Virgo. Uh, so if you have any concerns, um, health concerns or work concerns, <clears throat> you might feel like the boss is going to be breathing down your neck um, because instead of handing a project in, you are seeking perfection perhaps. Where Sometimes good enough is good enough. On that note, we're going to take a break, so stay tuned. your soul with waves of consciousness on Ohm Times Radio. Ohm Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment, a philanthropic organization. Their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Ohm Times co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. Tune in to the Practical Intuitive Mind, Body, Spirit for the Real World with me, host Robin Fritz, Mondays at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 Eastern. I'll cover personal and business intuition, animal communication, mediumship, space clearing, past life regression, shamanic insights, energy healing, soul choice, and more, all to help you Tap your own intuitive and healing skills. No ifs, ands, or buts. Welcome back to The Dog Show. Up next, we have Satchmo. Satchmo is a member of the Shelter Pet Group. That's right, a group known especially for their couch snuggling, ball chasing, face licking, and of course, companionship. Now, let's see him in action. Look how he makes eye contact with his person. That's actually known as the treat stare. How intuitive, and now he appears to be excitedly turning in circles. Ah, the happy dance will come in with this group. But really, the best way to know an amazing shelter pet like Satchmo is to meet one. Visit the shelterpetproject.org today. Adopt. Brought to you by Maddie's Fund, the Humane Society of the United States, and the Ad Council. Hi there, welcome back to The Astrology Show. I'm your host and astrologer, Kelly Fox. Just before the break, I was talking about the new moon in Virgo that's happening on Tuesday night, as well as Venus moving into Virgo. 
So with this with this energy, oh, that was the other thing. I knew there was something else. Here's here's a tidbit. So on Tuesday, I'm just looking at my handy dandy calendar here. On Tuesday, we will have one, two, three, four, five planets in Virgo. Um, starting Tuesday, we're going to have the um, the Sun, Moon, Mercury, Venus, and Mars all in Virgo, and that is happening um, as soon as Venus moves into Virgo, 6:15 p.m. Pacific time, 9:15 p.m. Eastern time tomorrow evening. We will then have five planets in Virgo. Can you believe that? That's that's quite uh, that's quite unusual because the planets are usually uh, dispersed all around the zodiac. But we're going to have the five inner planets all grouped together in Virgo. And any time like that occurs or that happens, which is not that often, um, I always wonder where the baby's being born at that time because baby's being born tomorrow. At that time, even now, there's four planets in Virgo, uh, but baby, baby's born at that time with five, the five in planets in Virgo. I, I'm curious to know, like, how, how they're going to grow up, what are they going to be when they grow up, um, how do they utilize that Virgo energy? It's just absolutely fascinating. And hopefully that will slip into the shadow side of the sign and just, I'm thinking, constantly nitpicking. Um, but really, so tomorrow there's going to be five planets in Virgo. And the best use of that energy is to focus on health, diet, fitness, work, any sort of filing that you've been, uh, that's been lying around, any sort of detailed work, arts, crafts, anything that, um, that is, uh, requires detail or any sort of refinement, um, getting organized, um, checking off your to-do list, making checklists, um, editing, anything like that is a great use uh, of this energy with the five planets in Virgo. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so back to the new moon. So we've got the new moon in Virgo on Tuesday evening, and it's forming a square to Saturn. So this, this is interesting because it means that the moon is squaring Saturn and the sun is squaring Saturn. So with with this new moon, some of us, particularly the mutable signs, and that's uh, Gemini, Virgo, Sag, and Pisces, you know, we, we might there might be some painful emotional memories coming up for us, um, things around authority because uh, Saturn in Sagittarius is about authority uh, and criticism. A lot of us might be feeling criticised or critical. Um, it could be some feelings of loneliness. Uh, at this time because of this square from Saturn uh, to to the new moon, or I should say the new moon to Saturn. Um, some of us uh, might be feeling that uh, we're working at cross purposes, um, authority issues at this time, because uh, the you know, like the new moon, so the sun and moon are together and there's a square to Saturn, so authority issues raise their heads and so people might find themselves backed into a corner, forcing to explain themselves. Oh, I really feel like the work of doom and gloom here. Um, let me think of a positive spin on this one. Um, it's sort of like, let me think here. It's like um, you've got to put the hard work in to get the reward. And, and if you haven't done that and you're expecting like instant results or, or answers, that is definitely not going to happen. Also, like, it, this is not a time to be taking shortcuts, especially with your health um, or anything to do with work. This is really this is really not a time for that. What makes it even um, tougher is that there is a quincunx uh, from Uranus to the sun and moon. So what that means is it's like something might feel just a little bit off um, emotionally or the direction that we're heading. Uh, we might be dealing with things that we hadn't planned on. And then all of a sudden, um, Saturn is involved and it's about authority. And Uranus comes in with these unexpected plans 
or things that we weren't expecting and we need to be dealing with the consequences, particularly if we uh, think that uh, we were going to take a shortcut. Uh, also, don't let impatience get the better of us too because the involvement of Uranus forming a quincunx to this uh, new moon in Virgo. So the other planetary influences this week, uh, on Sunday we had uh, Venus trying Uranus, so that's good news. Uh, so that's, that's not bad. I'm not the voice of doom and gloom after all. Um, so many of us might be feeling independent, um, particularly with our relationships, but in a good way. Uh, so we want to connect with people we don't usually connect with. Um, it's a good time to make dramatic changes to our appearance, um, especially with this new moon in Virgo, if it's for the sake of health, even better. Uh, we're, we're typically on the lookout for something new, something different. Uh, even with money and finances, uh, it might be a good time to step outside of the box and try something different. Uh, when it comes to money. Um, and then on Tuesday, uh, we've got Mercury opposite Neptune. Tuesday is a very busy day. New moon, Venus in Virgo, and then Mercury opposite Neptune. So be careful with um, any sort of communication that it doesn't get confusing. Yes, it sounds a bit like a Mercury retrograde. Um, it's a little bit different because uh, it's it's other people, because it's an opposition, it's all about someone else. So it's important that we make sure that we are understood. Uh, and if there's any sort of confrontation, it's because something is not clear or something has been confused. Um, other people might be, be a little bit evasive with this influence of uh, Mercury opposing Neptune. Um, what else about this? Oh, and if you have to make a decision when Mercury opposes Neptune, that might be a little bit difficult. Uh, might even be best to, to toss a coin and see what happens. It's sort of like that type of influence. Um, and any sort of information uh, might be incomplete or inconclusive. And just be careful not to be gullible. Don't, don't take anything at face value at this time uh, because... Uh, things might not be what they seem. Don't believe everything you are told. On Friday, uh, communication planet Mercury forms a trine to Pluto. And so this is really great. Um, this will clear up the energy of the Mercury opposing Neptune of tomorrow. And by Friday, it really should, we should be at the tail end of it. Um, Mercury is very strong when it forms a trine to Pluto. It's a great time for public speaking. Um, giving presentations or teaching something complex. Um, our minds are really sharp uh, with this influence of Mercury trining Pluto. Uh, we're very organized, especially with that Venus uh, energy, uh, excuse me, with the Virgo energy. Um, you know, we can speak with authority when Mercury connects harmoniously with Pluto. We can sway other people to our point of view. So if you're in sales, this is a really great influence. Um, go pitch uh, a big potential client uh, with this influence, and especially with the equinox on the same day. Um, you really do have the, the, the stars aligned on Friday with uh, all these great energies. It's a wonderful time for research, investigation, uh, also for self-help. With all that Virgo, um, the Virgo planets, I said there were five planets this week in Virgo, great time for self-help. Now your weekly horoscope. If you're an Aries, uh, you might be feeling the call of duty. Um, the new moon encourages you to be less selfish and more conscious of how you can help others. Uh, it might be a good time to volunteer in some sort of capacity or simply to take more time out of your day to be kind. It really is that simple. Um, with this new moon in Virgo, it's all about the small stuff. It's all about the detail. If you're a Taurus, get creative with your fitness ideas. You love beauty and space, so perhaps a dance class uh, would help turn you up. Maybe even swimming or Tai Chi. Um, think elegance in movement. Um, getting fit doesn't have to involve sweat and grunting. If you're a Gemini, the new moon focuses on your home. Think about getting rid of toxins by cleaning the air in your home. Um, you want to improve your environmental credentials. Um, perhaps by undertaking a lot more recycling. 
good for the planet. If you're a Cancer, make a conscious effort to be less moody and communicate. You can't expect other people to know what you want and need from them if you don't ask for it clearly. Let's not get passive aggressive. If you're a Leo, during this new moon, think about how your finances could help you become healthier, whether it's investing in a gym membership or spending a little more to buy organic food, but put your well-being first. If you're a Virgo, uh, with this new moon in your own sign, try to let go of your ideas of perfectionism. You're not perfect, but nor is anyone else. Embrace the good in you and the good that you do and try not to fret too much about your own flaws. If you're a Libra, make a spiritual resolution during this new moon to listen to your instincts and intuition more. Call it your higher self, your guides, your angels, or just your own gut feelings, but take notice of what you feel and start to act on it. If you're a Scorpio, the new moon encourages you um, to think about your long-term objectives. Where do you want to be this time next year, five years? What can you do to make it happen? Detailed thinking is key. If you're a Sag, be brave and put yourself on show in some way. Stop hiding your talents. If you're a Capricorn, travel is highlighted. It doesn't have to be too far. If you're Aquarius, the new moon helps you pay off debt. Focus on your money and finances. And finally, if you're a Pisces, this week. New moon is in your romance zone, so it's a wonderful time for meeting a soulmate. Even if you're already in love, you'll notice a freshness to your relationship. That's it from me. Thanks for joining me, and have a great week. This is The Astrology Show, and I'm your host and astrologer, Kelly Fox.